So we both have snake boots on or guards because we know there are copperheads and all kinds of nasty snakes. Even the ones that aren't poisonous bite and I don't want to be bit by anything. So Virginia's got hers on too. Hers are brown. So these are my snake boots and I also put on safety glasses after a couple of times. I'm like, oh, I think I should do that. So these are not for this, for the blade. These are for snakes. So, cause we have copperheads back here. We have all different kinds of- Biting. Biting things. So these are snake boots. And so they're awesome. They're very comfortable. They're, they're not really- to my foot. They don't get in the way. They hook up really nice. And I totally forgot what kind they are. They're not really boots. They're not boots. They strap on. They're Ooh. called Guard Z. They're the one of the best on the market. I'll try to put a link in the description below for you. And the medium is I have skinny calves, so if you have you want to make sure that this wraps around. So so how do we go to on? open like this because then a snake could technically get through. So they overlap. Here, they overlap. Like this. Put your pants in. What's going on here? And this gets tucked in. This snaps in. Like that. And this one comes around. Snaps in. Adjust it, bring it down lower, and then you can tighten it if you want. You see, it covers the whole leg. Nice. It makes you feel safe. Well, yeah. what's nice is you can wear your own shoes, which I love. I don't have to go get special boots that may not be comfortable. So with this, I can just snap it on, wear any kind of pants, wear any kind of boots I want, and they're awesome. So apparently it's a snake's instinct not to bite low, but bite high. Correct. So they anywhere, plunge upward between the ankle from the and knee. knee. Down. You know, they're at the ground, so they're gonna try and hit, you know, but Lord willing, I don't see any snakes. I didn't see any snakes today. And there's definitely a uh, swamp back there. So I was afraid of seeing a moccasin. But I also have my chainsaw, but I really didn't want to get that close to it. Because <laughs> I thought, whoosh, off with your head, baby. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is the chainsaw. That's the safety feature. And I was cutting like this with gloves on, straddling. So if it went, it hit my leg as opposed to whoosh, not a good thing. So do you think your stance is important? Yes. And I um, come from athletic family and athlete. I always good stands, balance. If you stand like this, you know, you can get pushed by the machine. So here low or bending my knees, I just naturally did this. And it was a natural stance for me and just coming and not stretching to hurt my back, but close enough where I can cut the tree. It's awesome. So near those stones, over there, there's a little stream. It's, it's runoff from a pond across the street. And it goes back there. And I want to cut all of this foliage out up to that little creek area, or drainage to that area. And then there's a tree in the back that I want to cut up to also. And then we'll be mowing this to keep the animals. This is all good, taken out too. And eventually that tree is going to come down too. But in the meantime, we gotta get rid of all this foliage. This is probably a four day job with just the two of us doing it. Cutting down the trees down there with a chainsaw for the first time in my life. So it cuts pretty easy and I realized that I don't have to do anything, just let the machine work. And then if I try to do something, then I realized that's probably when I would get hurt. Because if it's not cutting, I'm sure as heck aren't gonna push it to cut. But anyway, using the chainsaw and cutting and clearing back here. And so it's a really cool machine. First time I ever used it and I totally respected it and try to hold it away from my legs and just cut slowly and, you know, carefully and then turned it off as soon as I was finished with cutting something so that I wasn't traveling out there and tripping and falling and having the machine going at the same time. So we shut it off right away, push the thing forward. And then that would stop the chain from circulating. The thing. So, but the thing. The safety safety thing that, that thing on top. I there's a up. piece right there that you pull back or pull push forward. Push forward when you push it. forward it disengages the blade from spinning around the right. blade. So that's what that I would do after I cut a tree down. 
But they're little trees. They're not big trees. They're little stuff. But there are briars in there and a lot of things, so it's easy to trip and fall in there. So I made sure after I cut something, turn it off, and then put the blade down, put the saw down, or the whatever they call that thing, chainsaw. <laughs> but I'm pooped. I'm tired. That was a heck of a workout. So I was watching, and I was very proud of you. You were careful. You handled it perfectly. And I thought to myself, Virginia pays attention. <laughs> <laughs> Only shows I watch about people cutting with I a watch. chainsaw are me. Yeah, I watch. And then it got stuck one time, and I realized the bigger the tree, the easier it is to get the chainsaw stuck. Because, what do you mean stuck? Well, there was a thicker tree about that big, and so I was cutting through, cutting through this way, and it got stuck. The tree started to tilt, and it got wedged. Pinched. Pinched. So I tried to get it out, and then I realized, uh, let me slow down. And I pushed the tree. So when I pushed the tree, the blade came out a little bit easier, and then I pushed a little bit more, and the blade came out. And then Mel said, on this side where the cut was on the tree, cut over here. So I started the chainsaw up again and cut a little bit, and the tree fell. Awesome. Pretty cool. So all in all, will you use the chainsaw again? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a lot easier than doing this thing. I oh, mean, yeah. Wanting, you know. And no, some of no, them I are. Need that. <laughs> yeah, some of them are four inches in diameter. Yeah. So but that thing cuts like butter. I mean, it's like, a sharp done. blade. It's yeah. a sharp blade. It's very nice. Yep. How many days do you think it'll take us? Probably a week. Probably seven days to do it right and to get everything and then to start the fire and stuff. You know, and there's no rust because we're here for the winter time, so... We got a smoldering fire over there, you know, but... I don't want to work so much that I can't lift my arms tomorrow or that I can't do anything tomorrow, so do a little bit here, a little bit there, and eventually we'll get done. So I have something to look forward to tomorrow, too. So I'm going to leave all the trees here take them all out, clear it all out, and then start to cut them up and get the fire going. So when I cut down the tree, I decided not to cut it too low to the ground. One, I didn't know what was under there. And two, I wanted to cut a little bit higher, like maybe that high off the ground. Five inches. So when I was walking back there, I could see where the stumps were. Otherwise, if I cut it too low, I would trick and trip and kill myself. And I really didn't want that to happen. Actually, I trip when they're five inches high because I'm not really paying attention to where I'm walking. Yeah, so my, you can see them now and you can see where they are, so it's a lot easier when you're walking back there to pay attention. But there's still stumps back there that are really low to the ground, so you can kill yourself. Well, but we'll have to trim way. those down once we, we'll go back here with a weed eater and a blower and really clean it up. So then we'll just mow it and not let anything grow back here. We cut down a bunch of trees and we're trying to burn them in this um, fire pit that we had made years ago, but it's been kind of wet, so they're not really taking. And Virginia's trying to get in there right now and make it catch so they'll burn. We'll see. Okay. This needs a little help. It kind of helps that are dry and everything is above it so it's not catching it's not close enough to the holes on the bottom and now it'll start to catch as I put some dry stuff in there. So the dry stuff will catch the coals at the bottom and flame up and burn that twiggy right stuff. Right now it's got things that are holding it up from going down and it's not sitting on top of the fire. So Cut stuff around and let it sit on the fire. Fire making 101. I think I see a flame in there. Yeah. Yep. Stuff I just put in. Oh, there we go. Very nice. Mm 